coming in now, sir. Okay, listen up, team. You've all been chosen for this mission because you've seen plenty of action. We can't send a large force in without alerting... Adrian Bringing real-time strategy gaming to console has been tried on numerous occasions, but it was really only Halo Wars that has managed to do this with any success. It had a much narrower focus, which was perhaps as much to do with the Xbox 360 hardware as the limitations of playing with a controller instead of PC's keyboard and mouse, but simplifying that meant that you got rid of some of the more onerous parts of the RTS as well, like base management and resource collection. Practically all of that carries forward to Halo Wars 2, with the crew of the Spirit of Fire woken up after 28 long years in cryosleep, looking not a day older, and they soon find themselves being dragged into the path of a new galactic threat. Instead of trying to sidestep the mainline Halo series story this time around, they are right in the middle of the modern Halo era now, and Creative Assembly have even been given license to create their own enemies, the outcast Covenant faction called the Banished, and the awesomely powerful brute named Atriox, which is their leader. It's kind of funny though that the Spirit of Fire crew have no real idea what's going on. They've been asleep for such a long time, and so as they wake up after the events of Halo 5, they're still thinking that the war with the Covenant is still going on. It's almost like the classic Hollywood trope of Japanese soldiers coming out of the Pacific Ocean, Jungle Island, and thinking that they're still at war with the US. Of course, once they realise what's going on, it doesn't take too long before Captain Cutter gives a rousing speech to his crew and decides to take his hopelessly outmatched ship into the fight. Ascension, which is the third mission in the story, is what you're seeing being played here, and it is one of the first real strikes at the heart of the banished operations. There's echoes of Halo Combat Evolved as you try to reach the Ark's cartographer installation, but it's a fairly straightforward mission because you are just at the start of the campaign. First off, you have to explore the area, then set up a forward base, and then capture and hold a handful of control points from a steady stream of banished forces coming your way. Trickier and more inventive missions can come later, but this also makes it a good time to look at what has been tweaked and changed since the original Halo Wars. For this video, we actually decided to sit down with the PC version of the game, but we're playing with an Xbox One controller just to see how things have changed. You've still got twin analog stick camera controls for one thing, and the D-pad is still full of handy navigation shortcuts. But there have been some minor tweaks, such as how selecting all of your units is now double tapping the right bumper instead of a single tapping the left bumper as it was before, and that means that the left bumper can now let you speed up the camera and zip around the map a bit quicker. Better than that, holding the right trigger now lets you create, select, and go to command groups using the D-pad, bringing one of the best things about managing your army on a PC RTS to console. Halo Wars 2 keeps the same fast and fluid pace as its predecessor, and it's easy to just build a ton of units and send them wandering into a fight, but underneath all of that lies the usual rock-paper-scissors formula, with one type of unit being able to counteract another one. The Flying Hornet units, for example, are good at churning out bullets on a single target, but they can be overwhelmed by standard troops. But then you bring in the Hellbringers, who have flamethrowers and excel at clearing out units in fortified towers, but then they are poorly equipped to deal with attacks from the air. Of course, it will be much later in the campaign, and when you take the game online, these kinds of strengths and weaknesses will really pan out, with the full array of units and upgrades at your disposal. The campaign will take it easy on you, but deathmatch and domination multiplayer modes will see you lose miserably if you aren't quick enough at building up your base, building up your army, and making sure that you've got enough stuff going on at the same time. Playing 3v3 deathmatch, I was rescued on several occasions by my neighbours before we were finally able to build up a force powerful enough to roll through the enemy. And I admit I was the weak link again in Domination, and though we had an early lead, our opponents built this huge army that quickly outgunned us and managed to lock us out of all of the contesting control points. But Creative Assembly's true innovation here is with Blitz Mode, which is the subject of the beta test which is starting this weekend, and it aims to keep games feeling fast, light, and very accessible. Base building has been completely thrown out of the window, and so you now summon units from decks in your card. Yes, cards are an overused trope in games over the last few years, but it does work really quite nicely here and gives something that's easy to pick up and play, but with some real depth to it. 
Building your deck is simple enough. You just pick 12 cards that can be units, special variants of units, or leader powers to call in on the battlefield, and they all have numerical values. So as you play, you'll be earning energy from holding control points or from destroying and collecting the pods that periodically appear around the battlefield, and then you'll be using those to buy cards. There's always a random selection of four cards at the bottom of the screen, and they can come up time and again in any order. Buying a card then means that you can spawn that unit or use that power anywhere on the battlefield that you can see, though they will spawn at half health if you do this outside of your main spawn area. Again, this is up to 3v3, but playing a simple 1v1, as in this video, you need to move quickly. There's a fairly small points limit that can keep games down to less than 10 minutes, and you need to be constantly fighting to control two, if not three, of the control points available. We'll be going into more depth with Blitz as we play the beta over the weekend, but I quite like the look of this interesting and snappy mode that Creative Assembly have come up with. But most importantly, they're adding this to this game without tearing down the things that already worked. There's some minor tweaks to how the game plays, such as adding group management to the gamepad layout, but the heart of the game remains, and this looks like it will be a great sequel to what was a landmark console strategy game. Thanks for checking out our video, and as always, if you've enjoyed it, well, there's two buttons that we'd love for you to click on. You can also head over to the sixthaxis.com where we have a written preview, an interview, and where we will eventually be taking a deeper look at Blitz after the weekend. Hopefully, we will see you again soon. Goodbye. I'm losing control, Jerome. We need to stop the banish from holding those towers. Target eliminated. I've been targeted by the enemy. We are almost there, team.